In this video, I want to talk about algorithmic complexity. Now, you can have several different algorithms that all have the same job and all have the same outcome. So, later on in the course, for example, we meet um, two algorithms that do the same job. Uh, we meet Kruskal's algorithm and Prim's algorithm. They both allow you to find the minimum spanning tree of a network. Now, those words and those terms may be completely alien to you at this point. It doesn't matter. The point is that you've got these two different algorithms that give you the same output. Um, however, they go about it in two different ways. So they have two different routes to get there. Now, the thing about that is, is that one of them may take more steps to get to the answer than the other one. Consequently, one will be faster than the other and will be more efficient. Um, so that's where this idea of algorithmic complexity comes in. We need some way of measuring which one is going to be faster than the other. Okay. Now, in order to represent that, we use what's referred to as big O notation. So big O notation is going to look something like this. So we write order of n, order of n squared, or order of n cubed, etc. Now you can have, uh, have other orders. So um, you can have like order of log n, for example, but we don't consider those types of situations on this course. Okay? So there'll just be basic ones like this. Now, what does that represent? It kind of looks like function notation, um, but it's not really. Um, so really what it means is that here we would refer to that as linear complexity, because it's, it's like having um, mx plus c, isn't it? Okay, uh, But you've just got the single n, it's not n squared, it's not n cubed in there. So refer to that as linear complexity. This would be quadratic complexity for obvious reasons, and this would be cubic complexity. And the further you go on, the worse it gets. Okay? So the larger that power of n, the longer the runtime's going to be when you uh, extend the problem itself. So it represents, as it says here, the complexity of the algorithm and how it scales up. Essentially, the way that you should think about it is it describes the worst case scenario. For certain algorithms, um, so if we take, for example, uh, the bubble sort algorithm, which is an out one of the, uh, is a sorting algorithm, okay, so it sorts uh, letters or numbers into ascending or descending order. Um, its best case scenario is if the list of numbers is already in order, and that is order of n. Okay. However, its worst case scenario, when the numbers in are complete reverse order, is order of n squared. So we would refer to bubble sort as having order of complexity of uh, n squared, or quadratic complexity, because that's the worst case scenario. Okay, so generally what we can say is that if you've got a problem and let's say your problem was that you had 100 numbers to sort into ascending order. Okay, let's say that was the problem. Now, if you had that problem, and then if you doubled it, okay, so if you doubled the size of that, so if you had 200 numbers instead, if the algorithm you're using is order of n, then what that means is that you would expect the problem to take twice as long. So if you double that, you would expect the time to take twice as long or the runtime. However, if the algorithm you're using is order of n squared, if you've doubled the problem, then actually you're going to multiply the runtime by 4, by 2 squared. 
And if it was order of n cubed, you would multiply your runtime by 2 cubed by 8. OK? So what we can say in general, in generality for this, is that if you've got order of n to the r, OK, if the actual runtime of a problem is uh, n, say, OK, then scaling by a factor of k, so if you scale it by a factor of k, um, gives a runtime of, so here we doubled it, and that got cubed, OK? So you want to get your factor, k, and it's going to go to the power of r, and it's going to multiply by the length of time that it takes, OK? So let's say, for example, we've got the 100 numbers to sort into ascending order. Let's say I know that that takes five seconds. So I've got an algorithm um, where 100 numbers to sort into ascending order. It takes five seconds to do it. And let's say it's order of n squared. OK, so that's the information I would have to be given. Then let's say I've now got 600 numbers to sort into ascending order. How long is that going to take? Well, the actual problem is six times as large because you've gone from the 100 numbers up to the 600 numbers. It originally took five seconds. So the length of time that this will take will be, well, the factor here is six. It's order of n squared, so that needs to be squared times by the length of time that the original problem took. So you've got 36 times 5, which would be 180 seconds. OK? So we're going to go through some more problems like this in the coming videos. But that is essentially what complexity is all about. Now, don't worry, you won't be given a complicated algorithm that you've never seen before and then asked, um, can you work out its order of complexity? That can be quite difficult. Okay, that can be quite a difficult problem. So, essentially, questions will involve you being given the big O notation, okay, like it was here, and doing some kind of calculation that I've done there. Or alternatively, it might refer to the complexity of certain algorithms that you should know by that point. OK, and I'll be introducing complexity for the different algorithms as we go through this playlist.